So let's see how we can use these um, molecular orbital diagrams to help answer questions. Uh, like if we had O2 plus that particular ion, how many unpaired electrons would we have and then what would the bond order be? So we can start off with this orbital diagram for O2 and we can redraw it over here where you have this, 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 pi, pi, that. Um, and we have sigma, sigma star, this is the sigma, sigma star. So every other sigma is a star, and then every other pi is a star. That's one way to think about it. Single lines are sigma, double lines are pi, or, uh, double lines are pi. So if I didn't give you this part here, you should still be able to get it. Sigma, sigma star, so every other sigma is a star, every other pi is a star. And now for O2 plus, O2 has um, so O has six electrons, right, times two gives me 12. That plus means I lost one. So I need to put 11 electrons in here. So I have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So right from this orbital diagram, I can tell I have one unpaired electron right here. It's one unpaired electron. So again, remember to half fill everything before you pair it. So I have one unpaired electron. And then what's the bond order? The bond order is going to be one half of uh, the bonding minus the non-bonding. So the non-stars minus the stars. So I have two here in, not in bonding orbitals. So two, four, six, eight, uh, minus one, two, three. Right, so let me just show you where the anti-bonding orbitals are. Right, this is one, and then these guys. That's where the three came from. So that is what? One half of five. So that's like 2.5. So this is that means when you have O2 plus, O2 plus, you have a two and a half, a bond order that's like two and a half. So it's like a it's a, somewhere between a double and a and a triple bond. Um, so if you think about what the bond now let's let's think about this for um, O2, right? Let's find the bond order of O2. We already have this up here, right? So the bond order for O2 um, is one half of, right? I have two, four, six, eight minus two, four. So four mi eight minus four is four. Half of four is two. So for O2, the bond order um, is two. And now, when I got rid of one electron, I got it. I got rid of it out of here, right? Out of this anti-bonding orbital. That means it's working against bonding. It's higher in energy, so the bond order increases, right? This becomes a stronger bond when I remove something from an anti-bonding orbital or non-bonding electrons. And so, if we were to compare like the bond length or strength for these um, these two things, O2 versus O2 plus. O2 plus has a bond order, right? O2 plus has a bond order of 2.5, and then O2 has a bond order of 2. Bond order equals 2.0. So we would say this guy is stronger, right? It has higher uh, bond enthalpy. It's going to be harder to break, um, but O2 um, would be longer and weaker. This guy's stronger and shorter. Right, so the greater the bond order, the uh, the stronger the bond, the shorter it is. The longer the bond is, the the um, weaker it is, and the lower the bond order. So we could do another one of these. Um, so if we wanted to look at O2 two minus, all right. So O2 two minus is the same setup here. O2 two minus means what? Well, I'll just draw it again. O2 two minus so again. Here's O2. O2 was what, one, two, three. All right, and we had sigma, sigma star, sigma, sigma star, pi, pi star, that's O2. Now O2 minus means I had 12 electrons and then I have um, another two, right? So I had six, let me back that up. Each oxygen has six electrons, I have two oxygens, that gives me 12 plus two for the charge, gives me 14 electrons. So I'm going to do 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. So um, this is going to be magnetic properties. That means it's diamagnetic. There's no unpaired electrons. Uh, and the bond order. Let's calculate the bond order. So I have 1 half 
one half of, now what do you think is going to happen um, when I went from O2 to O2 minus? I put two more electrons in these antibonding orbitals, so that's going to decrease the bond order. So I have, um, right, I have two, four, six, eight in bonding orbitals, and then I have, these are my starred orbitals, right? So I have these guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight minus six gives me two. One half of two is one. So my bond order now is just one, right? So that makes sense, the bond order decreased. Bond order equals one. I can do the same thing for C2, two minus. So again, if you go back over to carbon, this is the, um, this is the order. So it, it's different than what it was for oxygen. These two things kind of flip around. So for C2, C2, I have one, two, it's kind of weird, um, but I have sigma, sigma star. This single line is a sigma, and this one is a star. And this is pi, because it has two, and this one is pi star. And if I wanted to put in my electrons, so C2, two minus. So carbon has four valence electrons times two, gives me eight, and the two minus means I have two more. So I have ten electrons I want to put in here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just put two more electrons into um, a bonding orbital, so I would say the bond order was probably going to increase. So let's see. So I have one half of two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, minus two in those starred orbitals, which gives me six. So my bond order here is going to be three. And this one is also diamagnetic because there are no unpaired electrons. So if you want to compare magnetism up here to, um, this guy was paramagnetic, right? O2 plus is paramagnetic because it has one unpaired electron. So there's a couple homework problems that look like this. Should be able to do, answer these kind of questions.